Brothers and sisters, Namah Buddhai Jai Bim. Thank you. Um, okay, so during the period of this uh, lockdown, um, the theme of our online Sangha nights has been uh, Dharma for difficult times. And in the very first talk, Vidanya made it very clear that uh, in amongst the, the, uh, the challenges and the difficulties of this situation, uh, there are um, opportunities and the subsequent talks have, have explored those opportunities. So the opportunity to connect compassionately, the opportunity to develop contentment with a still and simple life, opportunities to work with fear and anxiety. Yeah, and then last week, the, op the, uh, the opportunity to come to a clearer and wiser perspective. So this talk um, will be about the opportunity to develop another quality, another great quality. But before I start on that, so um, yesterday when I was when I was sitting down in my room, getting ready to uh, write this talk to prepare for it, um, so I decided, well, maybe I'll prepare it this afternoon. So I started watching something on my laptop, and then quite soon. Um, a friend from the community um, came into my room, knocked on the door, came into the room, was quite upset, wanted to talk. So, um, so then I spent some time talking to him. Then back, back to uh, the task in hand. And then um, not long after, one of the young people that I used to look after in Calcutta messaged me saying, Uncle, help. So I called him. He needed uh, financial help, so I had to arrange for sending money overseas. Got all that done, back to the task at hand. Um, shortly after that, another friend from the community knocked on the door, came in the room. They'd had a very intense meeting and uh, just needed to let off a bit of steam about that. Um, good. And then, um, then I got a, um, an SMS from another friend nearby asking me for a favor, could I do them a favor? Look at something in the, in, the, uh, community, in the center for them. A little bit later, someone came to have a meditation review. <laughs> Eventually, by mid-afternoon, I uh, got round to actually thinking about this talk, which is very interesting because the subject of the talk is patience. Uh, isn't it funny how life prepares you for just what you need? Okay, so I've used the word patience. Patience, that's the most common translation of the word kashanti. Kashanti. So kashanti is one of the great practices of Buddhism, one of the paramitas of a bodhisattva. Um, but for us, the word patience, it has associations. So it can have associations of gritting our teeth, uh, passively putting up with stuff, waiting for things to pass. And that is one aspect of Kshanti, but um, there's also a much more as uh, active aspect of Kshanti, where we really uh, work hard to um, develop strength, to connect with a bigger perspective, uh, to transform the way that we relate to the world. So because of that, Kshanti can also be translated by words like uh, perseverance, steadfastness, uh, endurance, so yeah, Kashanti, it's a strength, a resilience that enables us to bear difficulties uh, so that we're not blown around so easily by the world. Um, and in the process, we strengthen our minds, transform our minds. When I was thinking about this, the image came to me of um, making a sword, making a sword. So I have um, absolutely no idea how to make a sword. I have no expertise, but probably absorbed from various um, films about warriors. Um, I imagine that the process of uh, making a sword is uh, heating it up to a great heat, beating it on an anvil with a hammer when it's soft, then plunging it into cold water, sizzling cold water, and then repeating that process of uh, heating and beating and cooling, heating and beating and cooling. And, uh, in, and then at the end of that process, of course, 
is uh, forged a, a, a strong, straight, powerful blade. So that's my uh, image for Kashanti, um, the cycles of heating, and beating and cooling. Um, yeah, so can we withstand the heat? Can we withstand the hammer blows? Uh, can we withstand the sizzling cold water? And in the process, forge a strong and straight and powerful mind. Okay, so what is it that we need Kshanti for? You know, um, what do we need to have patience for? So um, I'm going to talk about three broad areas, which are patience towards life itself, patience towards others, and patience towards ourselves. So they're my three broad areas. So firstly, patience towards life itself. So yeah, the ups and downs of everyday life uh, press our buttons and give us plenty of opportunities to practice patience, to practice kshanti. Um, so uh, one of the famous sayings of the Buddha from the Dharmapada is um, patience is the highest form of asceticism. Patience, kshanti, is the highest form of ascetic practice. So at the Buddha's time, um, um, spiritual practitioners used to do these ascetic practices. So all sorts of extreme things to try and ramp up the intensity, turn up the heat, and somehow provoke a breakthrough to enlightenment. So things like gradually... Um, decreasing the amount of food you, you eat per day until you're down to one grain of rice each day, um, hanging upside down off a branch for several days meditating, that's one, uh, sitting between a circle of raging hot fires, so that sort of thing. So what this verse is saying um, is that we don't need to seek out especially intense situations. Uh, especially challenging situations to somehow prove our ability to bear difficulty. Everyday life gives us enough opportunities to train uh, in patience. So what this verse is saying, that the best practice is just forbearance in the midst of everyday life. The best training is um, just bearing life's trials as well as possible. So yeah, bearing the frailty of our own bodies, uh, the aches and pains, the sicknesses, the aging, um, bearing the separation from loved ones, the loss of loved ones, bearing the discomforts of nature, bearing not getting what we want, and bearing contact with things that we don't want. So it's through learning to endure day-to-day uh, -day discomforts that we develop stamina, spiritual stamina. We develop a thicker skin. So in the great 8th century uh, text, um, Indian text, Shantideva, um, sorry, the name of the text is uh, the Bodhichari Avatara, the Bodhisattva's way of life. So Shantideva says, through practice with minor discomforts, even major difficulties become bearable the irritation of bugs, the discomfort of an enormous itch, cold, heat, rain and wind, the weariness of travelling around, sickness. Do not be too squeamish about such things. I don't know why, but uh, that list reminds me of India. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, my um, many years of contact in India has been a great training ground in patience. Uh, rashes, parasites, fungal infections, 45 degree heat, 100% humidity, um, spending a whole day in a queue waiting to see um, an official, um, waiting 18 hours on a platform for a train. So uh, yeah, uh, UK life seems a bit t tame in comparison. And it's a really great reason to go on pilgrimage. Come on pilgrimage, two years time. It's a wonderful training in patience. <laughs> Plenty of sitting around waiting for who knows what, 
wondering what the hell is going to happen next. <laughs> Memorable moments when someone gets to the end of their current capacity for patience. Moments that stick in the mind. I want to know when I'm going to next have a hot shower. Tell me! <laughs> and things like that. Not getting what we want can be a really good thing. Um, it can be really good if we can start to see discomfort as a friend, to relish discomfort as an opportunity to build patience. Uh, through getting into the habit of enduring slight discomforts, minor discomforts, we slowly develop a robustness of character, a resilience, a strength, a stamina, and that's extremely helpful for the rest of our practice. The Dharma life is a long, hard road, and we're going to need that strength. So any opportunity which helps us day by day to build strength and resilience is invaluable. And life will present us with these difficulties. Life is inherently precarious. Sometimes we will feel alone. We will feel afraid. We will feel uh, vulnerable. Sometimes we'll feel frustrated. And a lot of the time we try and avoid facing that. And we, we try to keep this illusion of feeling strong and okay and in control. But I think true strength comes from facing things how they really are, not pretending. I think a feeling of vulnerability that's based on reality is much better, much stronger than an illusion of invincibility. So Shantideva describes Kashanti as a warrior-like spirit. He says, I will try and become invincible to discomfort. I will not allow my confidence to be disturbed. I will take the blows on the chest. With a firm mind, I shall make difficulty for difficulty. For I am a son of the Buddha, the lion-like conqueror. So yeah, Kishanti, it's a noble, warrior-like quality of being prepared to face adversity, to overcome resistance, and to face our mind for the sake of liberation and for the sake of others. So when we do that, we can really draw a sense of confidence and dignity from being able to bear difficulties, um, to, um, yeah, to not be defeated. And... Um, in our lives so far, however old we are, we will all already have borne a lot of difficulties. Um, we will already have built up quite a lot of strength. It might not feel like that sometimes, but I think we have more resources than we think. We're often stronger than we think. We find that in, when um, we listen to people give their life stories. People can t tell the story of their life, which will include some very painful times, times when they've... Um, um, found life really difficult, maybe times when they've fallen apart a bit. Um, so in the telling of the life story, they, they connect with um, sort of a sense of not having strength, not having resources. But from the other side, listening to it, you nearly always think, oh, you, have, you must have been really strong to have lived your life. You must, you, know, you must have built up a lot of strength through living that life. So that's the patience towards life itself. And um, secondly, we need patience towards other people, kshanti towards other people. So traditionally, kshanti, it's said to be the, uh, the antidote to hatred. And with hatred, there's a whole family of associated uh, emotions, irritation, resentment, righteous indignation, fault finding. So it's not just pure hatred, but the whole sort of family of um, um, negative emotions related to aversion. And hatred is compared to a snake bite, or a dart lodged in the heart, or a forest fire. So it's something that causes damage, and it undermines our efforts, and it gives us no peace. So when people get in the way of us, when they get in the way of what we want, when people offend us, maybe when people accuse us falsely, it's to be expected that anger will rise up. 
in that moment as a, as a, as a response. In a way, that's a very primitive response, isn't it? We're, we're hardwired to respond in that way. It's an arising of energy which, which um, occurs when something gets in the way of what we want. The problem, really, is what we then do with that anger. Do we explode and scorch everyone who happens to be around us? Or do we try and lock it up in a box and bury it deep in our being, uh, but somehow sort of leaking this atmosphere of uh, irritability and grouchiness? So there's these two basic response, responses to anger, explode or bury it. And I think we need to expand our repertoire of what we can do with anger. And that's where Kshanti comes in, the transformative power of Kshanti. So Kshanti here, it's the ability to stay in the gap. To, it's the staying power to uh, experience the uh, energy of anger, to bear that anger. Uh, it's the, um, the, the ability to not retali retaliate and to take the time that's needed to change the way that we see a situation and to develop an attitude which is uh, free from that ill will. And then to act as creatively as possible. Because Kshanti, it's not just about inaction. It's not passive. It's not about not acting. It's actually about ensuring that we're able to act as skillfully and creatively as possible and helpfully. So this sort of situation came up at the time of the Buddha. So the Buddha was one of many teachers at that time, wandering around India. And his Sangha was one of many Sanghas. There were many, many followers of spiritual wanderers. But the Buddha's followers had a particularly good reputation particularly in the, in the city of Shravasti, where the Buddha spent a lot of time. They had a great reputation. And the followers of other teachers didn't like that. Uh, probably they were worried that it would cut off their supply of alms food. Yeah? It would hit their stomachs. So they, um, the followers of rival sects hatched, sects hatched a nasty plot to try and frame the Buddha's followers. Um, they wanted to frame the followers of the Buddha for the, the murder of a, uh, a wandering woman called Shundari. And um, when they'd planned the whole thing, they then goaded the, uh, the locals saying, these followers of the Buddha, they're hypocrites. They claim to lead an upright Dharma life, but they commit crimes such as this. And the people the local people started to respond. They started to abuse the Buddha's followers, to shun the Buddha's followers. So the, the plot was working. The followers were worried. They went to the Buddha and explained what was happening. The Buddha, what the Buddha told them was, under no circumstances should you retaliate. Under no circumstances should you retaliate. Just reply to the people calmly. Whoever did this act, whoever murdered this woman, will surely suffer terrible consequences. And you yourselves, you reflect. My mind will be unwavering. I will endure this without retaliating harshly. I will maintain a heart full of metta without resentment. So that was the response. And gradually over the next few days, the local people seeing this response, this refusal to retaliate, this refusal to um, defend themselves, this remaining uh, calm um, with unwavering minds. The local people could see for themselves that the Buddha's followers were not responsible for this murder. That's quite an extreme story. Um, so the, what the Buddha was encouraging his followers to draw confidence, to draw dignity, from having the strength to refuse to give in to resentment and hatred, to refuse to give in to provocation. When other people get in the way of what we really want, when they frustrate us, obstruct us, that's a real test of what we're made of. And it's a real opportunity to strengthen our mind, to develop Shanti. You know, however blissful and calm we might be in meditation, the real test of our mental state is that 
How do you respond when other people try to get in your way? And there's been a lot of uh, talk during the lockdown, this phrase of fighting the unseen enemy, fighting the unseen enemy. Of course, that's um, relating to coronavirus. Um, but of course, that fight, that battle is always going on. It always has gone on. Um, but of course, the unseen enemies lie within us. So Shantideva says, enemies such as craving and hatred lack bodies. They lack hands and feet. They are not brave. They are not wise. How is it they enslave me like this? Lodged within my own mind, it is me that they strike down. So the unseen enemy, craving, hatred. Is Shantideva definitely urging us not to be tolerant, not to be patient um, of actions that cause harm, of our impulses that cause harm to ourselves, harm to others. That's the one thing we shouldn't be patient towards. Um, he's urging us to keep working to do something about our unruly minds, to not just lie back and let our minds roam free and do their worst, to refuse to give in to those negative emotions that undermine our potential to experience positive emotions such as metta, compassion, joy, appreciation, gratitude. So that's the importance of um, patience, kashanti towards others. And um, the final aspect of kashanti I'd like to talk about uh, before I finish, it's uh, patience towards ourselves. Because having said all this, we will sometimes fall short. We will sometimes lose patience. We will sometimes react. Uh, we will sometimes realize that the challenge is too much for us as we are now. That currently we don't have the strength. And when we're in that, those sorts of situations, we really need to be uh, forgiving of ourselves and patient towards ourselves for that, for being an imperfect, limited human being. It's actually quite humbling for me to give this talk. I, I, mean, I offered to give the talk on Kshanti and then I started thinking about it and thinking um, how unlikely it is. So I, um, a few years ago, uh, I was the chair of the Buddhist Center before Satya Jyoti. And um, for various reasons, I found the experience very difficult, very challenging. Some internal reasons, some external reasons. I don't need to go into that. Um, but basically a point came when I ran out of strength, I ran out of patience, and I resigned. So I was thinking about that and thinking, um, well, in that situation, I sort of, uh, yeah, I ran out of Kshanti, and here I am giving a talk about Kshanti, how strange. Um, I think it's important not to pretend that you are invincible when you are not. So just keeping going in a situation that is harming you or breaking you, um, well, that's martyrdom, and we don't do martyrdom. So there isn't any virtue in sticking it out in a situation to the point of self-harm. Yeah? to the point of um, reckless self-sacrifice. Because when we do that, what, actually, what does that communicate to others? Are we communicating something attractive to others when we drive ourselves in the name of patience to um, the point of self-harm? Yeah? Sometimes we need to concede the battle. We need to retreat. We need to regroup, refresh rebuild our strength then we get back on the horse and we try again hey and here i am on the horse yeah it's taken a while yeah going back to the analogy of dharma warriors so a, a dharma warrior um, is not reckless dharma warrior is highly skilled you know a warrior knows how to put on all this armor 
when it's needed, but they also know how to take it off when they need to move more easily, move more freely. Uh, they know when to fight and when not to fight. As I said before, the Dharma life, it's a long road. And sometimes we just need to save our strength, save our stamina for what's most important. So, um, continuing the uh, <laughs> warrior analogy. So a warrior, once they've uh, fought the good fight, uh, they can go back to their encampment and show off their battle scars with great uh, pride. So um, when you next get the opportunity to uh, see me in the flesh, if you look closely into my eyes, you will see in the corner of my eyes some small wounds, some small scars, some small discolorations. And these developed a few months after I became chair of the centre. Um, I, uh, I had a cholesterol test. It wasn't cholesterol. So um, the suggestion is that it was due to stress. And um, initially, I was quite distressed about that and um, used to look in the mirror and um, think how ugly it was. These days, I look in the mirror and I, um, I look at those uh, battle scars and they're, remo they're a reminder of my determination to do my best to face challenges. Well, because I did do that. I did my best to face challenges. Um, they remind me that I can come out of my comfort zone. I can rise to a challenge. I can face difficulties. Um, I have developed Kishanti. They, um, they also remind me that uh, it's possible to run out of strength that um, my strength is limited, that I am a conditioned, imperfect human being. So um, that is, uh, and the other thing, the other thing is the, uh, the pride when I um, notice those scars, that all of that, I did it for others. I did it for the Sangha. These are my, uh, these are my battle scars. So um, next time you see me, feel free to have a look. I won't feel self-conscious. So I'm going to finish now, um, and it's a quotation from um, a 14th century Tibetan master called Tsongkhapa. Uh, it's a text called The Concise Meaning of the Stages of the Path. Path. And there's a very beautiful section about Kashanti, about patience. So I'll finish with that. Patience is the finest ornament of powerful beings. It is the best restraint from the tormenting passions. It is the Garuda bird, the enemy of the snake of hatred. It is the armor that is not pierced by weapons of harsh speech. Having understood this, one will craft in many ways the armor of great patience. The great teachers have practiced like this. Those desir desiring liberation will do likewise. Thank you. Um, so I've talked about these three areas um, of Kshanti. And um, I, you know, our, dis our reflections in our group discussions could hang around those three areas. So patience towards life itself. So that relishing of discomfort as an opportunity to develop patience, to develop strength. Can we do that? And secondly, patience towards others. So that staying in the gap um, where we experience the energy of our anger without exploding, without retaliating. Can we do that? And finally, patience towards ourselves. So that forgiving of ourselves for being imperfect, limited human beings who sometimes do run out of strength and patience. Can we do that?